Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here. And today I've got another interesting knife review slash knife overview to show with you guys. This is the Vosteed Mini Nightshade in carbon fiber and S35VN. I'm gonna tell you guys right now, I think the price tag on this is really great. Um, it comes in at 99 bucks, um, which is, you know, this is a Chinese made knife, but uh, S35VN and carbon fiber, pretty darn good materials for that price. And also uh, it comes in 14C28N for, I think it's a different handle material, but for $59. I'll link both versions down in the description so you guys can check it out if you want to. It does help my channel when you use those links, but that's entirely up to you. Thanks so much to uh, Vosteed for sending this in. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me. And please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. I don't usually talk about the price right off the bat, um, but I thought in this case it might be a good idea to talk about it. It's not a huge knife. Let's go ahead and get a measurement. Six and a quarter inches overall length, blade length 2.75, cutting edge two and a half on the smaller size, not a micro knife and honestly surprising in the hands because of how they shaped it. Um, not a micro knife, but definitely a smaller knife. Let's go ahead and do just a few size comparisons today up against the Ontario Rat Model 1 and the Ontario Rat Model 2. So it is smaller than both uh, of these. How about up against the CJRB Pyrite? Um, how about up against, yeah, let's do the Civivi Elementum and Maybe just one more. Let's do the Spyderco Para 3. All righty, how's the action on this guy? It's really good. Um, I don't always you know, feel great about smaller knives with crossbar locks, but this works. It's actually really easy to manipulate. Oh, I, I think positioning, right? Length of the handle and the distance between, like, I mean, obviously you're, everybody's hands are different sizes, but for my hands, the distance between where the butt of the knife meets my palm and where my thumb and index finger naturally fall. Um, that will determine whether or not I enjoy carrying uh, and deploying knives that are smaller use, using crossbar locks. And this one actually works. Now, if you have huge hands, obviously this is, not, I wear an XL glove, which is, I always joke is, you know, cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of men who pride themselves on the, you know, they go to Home Depot and walk around. It takes them a long time to get to the glove aisle. They're like, howdy Frank. What you up to today? Oh, just got to go get a new pair of gloves. I wear an XL, so it's a pretty big deal. Okay. <laughs> they make their way down there and buy their pair of gloves, right? Yeah, no. Uh, that's not, that's pretty normal. That's, I honestly, I think like all companies who make gloves like came together and they're like, let's just make like a normal size. Let's just call it XL so that men can like feel really good about it. Maybe they'll buy gloves more often. <laughs> <laughs> if you wear a 2XL or 3XL glove, you have huge hands. And if you have huge hands, you're probably not going to like this. So about my size hands or smaller, I think you will probably really enjoy carrying and manipulating this knife. Um, anyways, um, let's go ahead and do um, carry profile. Did I? Were we talking about action? Is that what we were talking about? I, that's pretty much it for the action. It, you can deploy it um, using your thumb or your... Uh, you know, middle, you can reverse flick it. It's actually really easy to manipulate however you like to manipulate knives like this, which is kind of surprising given the size. Anyways, thickness up against the Spyderco Para 3. It's actually pretty darn thin. And these scales are lightly contoured, which is really nice. Length and height up against the PM2 and Para 3. This is not going to be a difficult knife to carry. Uh, it's very lightweight and very compact for sure, but not so small that you'll forget it's there, which I think is a... A thing, you know, like, uh, you know, people who like to carry the mini bug out, that's great, but I, I would venture to guess that's one of the most washed knives in existence. The mini bug out has, uh, the, there, there have to have been more mini bug outs lodged in washing machines than any other pocket knife because there's no way that people always remember that they're there. <laughs> so, um, anyways. Let's go ahead and do a hardware check. I'll get out my tools as per usual. My tools are very inexpensive and very recommendable. You can find them right down in the section of my description that talks about the tools that I use on this channel. I'm pretty sure that pivot is going to be a T8, and it is. The rest of these screws are all T6. They're also 
holding in a, um, it's got a little bit of a cartridge liner. I don't know if you can actually see it in there, but that's just for the internal housing of the axis uh, lock and the, you know, the Omega Springs, et cetera. Um, and this screw is holding the scale to that. So we've got one screw up here for the stop pin, which probably wasn't necessary. We probably could have just like, you know, lip that in or just like uh, sort of, you know, stuck it in. I think they like they do like a, a press fit. I think that would have been just fine or just like a floating stop pin. Um, but we got a screw there. We got a screw in the middle. We got two screws at the back, right? So this is, it's almost like they took a note from Benchmade. Like let's do a bunch of screws on top of having to deal with the axis bar. And the disassembly of, of knives like this is just, you know, it's like mildly irritating. It's very easy to do. It's just a lot more irritating than something like, um, you know, a, a, a typical like liner lock or frame lock that's just got four screws, right? Um, so it's doable, but it's not, it's not the, it's not the like most simple thing in the entire world. Uh, I would recommend a Tupperware container, um, not only to put your hardware in, but also to keep springs from flying all over the place. Um, better yet, a magnet. Um, I, uh, love using this, um, Angle Square, which is actually in my Amazon store. I don't talk about this very much, but it's got uh, magnets all over it. And I can just put the screws and just stick them. As long as it's not titanium hardware, uh, you can just stick them to whatever side of the magnet you want. They stay right there and they don't roll all, all over the place. Um, but uh, yeah, it's fine. Uh, I would prefer at least T8 hardware and maybe less screws, but it's not the end of the world. Let's go ahead and weigh it. So we're looking at carbon fiber, a little tiny bit of steel. It's mostly carbon fiber, some aluminum for the like the backspacer, um, and then we have S35VN. So the weight, this can't be. It might not even be two ounces. Yeah, 1.6 ounces. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, you're not carrying a, a whole lot. You know, it's it's pretty light. Um, let's see. We did the whole. Oh yeah, we forgot to measure the blade stock thickness. The blade stock thickness on this guy is actually quite thin. Let's see what we're dealing with here. 96 thousandths, 95 thousandths, very thin blade stock. All right, meat and potatoes time. This does come in, if you go with the S35VN version and you don't want a black blade, it does come in a tumbled blade or satin blade. I honestly couldn't remember what it what it was. It's one or the other, um, but that's nice. The carbon fiber on this looks good. They didn't cheap out on the carbon fiber. Um, it's a solid piece, but it's nicely finished. It's contoured. Um, it doesn't have a bunch of voids or crap in it. I, I don't know about you guys, but I, I really don't like um, shred carbon fiber. And we see it so often. And that stuff is just loaded with voids. And I was, it's probably nature of the beast, but I just feel like this style of carbon fiber looks a lot better and it feels a lot better. So um, the blade comes down to a very thin, because of how this is shaped, it's almost like, it's almost like a little tiny machete blade, right? Or like a cane. It's like a cane machete. Um, and the uh, I like that the nose is dropped because it still allows you to do really, It's the curvature of it allows you to do drop cuts really easily. Draw cuts, not drop cuts. Um, but then there's a lot of belly and there's actually quite a bit of room on this full flat grind to come down to a nice thin cutting edge. So this is a really nice slicer. Um, this thing will easily go through, you know, thick cardboard or, I mean, just to give you an example here, it is so ready uh, to bite into paper. It's just a lot of knives that'll do that. It doesn't prove a whole lot, but I, I can't stress enough exactly how ready this thing I'm trying to do like right across the top and get a nice curly cue so I can give you an example here. Um, it's, it's, it's really ready to bite. Um, so I, the, the edge geometry is really great. The spine of this blade is crowned, which is also pretty cool. Um, the black wash looks okay. I, I probably would have gone with the other one. Um, if you like smaller knives, then you're definitely going to like this one. Uh, but I also, you know, this is, this is the mini, um, nightshade. I keep wanting to say Nighthawk. Uh, but it's, they, they had a larger one. They had like a flipper. I'd like to see this, but larger. I want to see like a seven and a half to eight inch version uh, of this. I think that would be great for people who like larger knives. Um, but yeah, uh, ergonomically, it really is a shocker that we are, I'm, I'm legitimately almost able to get four fingers on this thing. Uh, not that you need to. The vast majority of the time when you're holding a smaller knife, um, you're going to, it's probably most of the time going to be used like this or like this, right? Or like this. 
Um, you're not usually going to be holding a knife like this in a hammer grip. But um, just for reference, you can almost get four fingers on this handle. And it's fairly comfortable. There's not – it's not a super like hand-melting experience, but it's plenty comfortable. And the pocket clip is not the worst thing in the world. It's not my favorite shaped clip, but it's not bad. And it's short. More, most importantly – this is a smaller knife. So the people at um, – the designer of this knife had the brains to go, maybe let's not put a giant clip on it. I will never understand people who design knives and they're like, um, yeah, just throw whatever size. Yeah, sure. Just make the pocket clip the same length as the handle. Or you know what? Now let's do 80%. What is wrong with you? This – if it's – it should be around 30% the length of the handle. That's what I think. Uh, if you want to go 40% max, fine. But 30% the length of the handle is where the pocket clip should be. Uh, I, I, I will never understand pocket clips that are just giant. It's just, it just is mashing into your hand. It's just a terrible, they shouldn't be like that. This is great. This is, the length of it is fine. Um, it's, you know, the center point is right here. So I guess it's, it's, it's a little over 40%, but this works. I should, re I should calculate what I'm actually, it should never be, more than 50%. It should never be past the 50% line. I would prefer somewhere around 30%. Let's put it that way. But this is a smaller clip. I guess it could be all the way back here. So if they mounted it clear to the back, right, if we're taking the length of the clip versus the total length of the handle scales, maybe it actually is around 35%. So who cares? Move on, complex. <laughs> this is great. The, the, I, I like the position of the clip. Um, I would have preferred the clip look more something like this, but this is fine, right? It'll work. Um, let's see here. Um, the uh, tension on the uh, axis bar is really great. There's plenty of spring tension there, so they didn't lose Lucy. They didn't use uh, Lucy Goosey uh, Omega Springs. It's fine. Um, as is the case with all Omega Springs, there's a chance they could break, right? And if they break, oh no, you have to throw the knife away, right? No, you can get more Omega Springs. You just size them out. They're pretty easy to get. Vosteed might provide you with extra ones. I don't know. You'd have to contact Vosteed, but just be aware of that. If you, um, you know, if you don't take care of your knife, um, then they will almost certainly break. But if you do regular maintenance on it and you, you know, spray a little bit, you could uh, honestly like some, um, some rem oil, just because this is, it's a lot of like moving uh, parts with friction. Rem oil, I think would be fine. That's what they use on uh, Microtech OTFs. So a spray of that every now and then would be fine, right? But if you do zero maintenance on this thing for five years, you, it might break, right? Um, so just be cognizant of that. We have uh, a little backspacer back here, a little aluminum backspacer, which looks fine. A little gear pattern, nothing too special there. Lanyard hole, yay, great, who cares? Um, there, <laughs> the lanyard, lanyard people care. Uh, there's a mounting position for lefties, which is great because crossbar locks are ambidextrous. So that's nice. Uh, in and out of the pocket, pretty easy, nice and smooth surface here. There is a little bit of shouldering, uh, wrapping around that stop pin there. So that's good. How does it lock out? A light lockout, totally solid. Let's do a full deployment. Also completely and totally solid. That's great. A uh, little teeny tiny bit of stick off of that lock bar, but it'll go away. It's not not bad at all. Uh, no pivot lash. Pretty consistent in here. It feels about the same once you uh, approach the event horizon of that lock bar. There's plenty of retention holding the blade in place. And do we have... I think it might be slightly off. That could be from me messing with it. Is it mushed? It's also a little bit mushed. This is pretty darn close. I think it's perhaps slightly off to the right. So I would prefer, you know, it's uh, Nick Chabaz said this recently. And honestly, a lot of people have said this recently. And I agree. It's 2023. Everything should be centered. If you sell a $5 knife, it should be centered, right? Certainly, if you sell a $1,000 knife, it should be centered. But, you know, $100 knives, same thing. I'm certain that it can be adjusted, but I would like to see perfect centering from the factory. This isn't really that big of a deal, though. Uh, you can do the paper trick. Um, knives with 
crossbar locks center up the same way as, you know, liner locks, frame locks, stuff like that. So it should be easy to do. In any case, Vosteed usually gets the centering correct. So I have faith in their machining capabilities. Their tolerances are probably tight enough that this will center up if you want it to be centered. So verdict on this, um, yeah, it's pretty great. 99 bucks for S35VN, carbon fiber, um, and a good overall design. I was really surprised at how well this actually works. For like, I mean, the blade is awesome. And I, I love uh, designs where I can get my finger right up behind the blade. Uh, that's really, really great. Honestly, yeah. Uh, and the 14C28N version for 60 bucks is also seems great, right? Either way. Um, I wish that they would also do a larger one. I think that that would be really, really cool. But as this thing sits, it's good to go. It's a recommendable knife. Not a budget knife, but plenty recommendable. Um, that's going to be pretty much it today. Like I said, I'll have this guy linked down in the description. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like, so check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.